Hey guys, let's go through a different example, an example which you'll see in a lot of textbooks and probably an example that your professor is first going to give you regarding evaluating double integrals and polar coordinates, right? Let's just go right to it. Our problem is that we want to calculate the volume of the sphere of radius A, okay? And, you know, in polar coordinates, the equation of this sphere is given by this over here. Now, I just want to be a bit clear on, on it. Region R is in polar coordinates. When we write something like this, this is actually called another name. This is called cylindrical coordinates. In mathematics, there are a lot of coordinate systems, and if you move to linear algebra, there's like more systems you can use to define points. As far as we're concerned, we've got the x, y, or rectangular coordinates, x, y, z, we've got polar coordinates, we've got cylindrical coordinates, and we've got one more cylindrical coordinates. So, this for another time. The volume of the sphere, or the equation of the sphere, cylindrical coordinates, is given by this. Now, what we want to do is that we want to calculate the volume of the sphere, like so. Alright, so let's see how we're going to go about doing it. Now, we will picture Z as our surface, okay? So, but if you were to take it from this equation, we have actually Z squared equals to A squared minus R squared, right? And then, once we take the square roots, we will, we will have Z equals to square root A squared, take away R squared, but don't you think we have one more? Okay, remember, when we take the square root, we've got the negative solution. So it's either this or negative square root A squared minus R squared. Now, this is of vital importance, okay? Now, the thing is that I have decided to choose the positive square root. Now, the positive square root gives me the sphere that is above the x and y plane. The negative square root will give me the sphere below the x, y plane. Now, some explanation as to why we kind of need two equations to describe the sphere in rectangular coordinates. Oh, sorry, where we take the square root as opposed to this one over here is because um, dealing with functions, there needs to be a unique value for z, for a certain um, a r that I pick. So for example, if the r I pick over here, I need to have a unique value. If I use this equation, the value I have would be lying above the x, y axis. If I use this, the value I have would be lying below. I can't use both of them because if I, something like this would give me um, two values, you see. Um, when I'm dealing with functions, or at least functions used for the double integral, there needs to be a unique value. It needs to be a function, okay, in terms of r and theta. But enough for that for now. That is really an advanced course. Alright, so let's go straight to writing the double integral. So what we have is that the volume, Alright, okay, but before we go there, now just think about it. If our surface we define is z equals to the function of r and theta is given by the positive square root. So basically, it's the surface above the x-y plane. Bearing in mind that we need to find the volume of the sphere by symmetry, the volume above the x-y plane is going to be equal to the volume below the x-y plane, right? So basically, the volume is going to be 2, okay? And what we want to do is that we want to calculate the volume of the sphere above, or the hemisphere above, is double, in, the double integral of r, Okay, and the function, what's the function? The function is basically um, square root a squared take away r squared. Okay, and we put dA first. Okay, let's just put dA first, the double integral in polar coordinates first, and see how we move to the iterative integral, which is what we're going to do now. So, this diagram tells me that the sphere is lying above the xy axis or the xy plane, and this is the, the region r that I want to find. Now, I would move the, the diagram all the way here, so basically I'm just looking down like this. Why? Again, because I need to find a proper way to define region r. So, what is the method that we've, we've taught, okay? The method that at least I taught, okay, start from the origin, 0, 0, and extend a line segment, okay? The line segment goes from the origin, and it goes over here like that. Now, it would intersect the region r twice. Now, the reason why you won't see the first time is because it intersected over here. Right, so what does this imply? This implies r1 theta is equals to 0. Okay, no surprise about that. So the second time it intersects, is, which is the outer um, curve in polar coordinates, is basically r equals to a. Now, if you have a problem seeing this, right, all you need to do is to let z equals to 0. Okay, because you see, the sphere would somehow intersect the x and y axis. Where the sphere intersects the x-y axis, that is the region R. So where does the sphere intersect the x-y axis? Well, it intersects the x and y axis when z is equal to 0. I hope we can see that. So you let z equals to 0. Let's just take it from here. z is equal to 0, you get r squared equals to a squared. What do we know about this? It's basically an equation of the circle, okay? And that equation is basically region R. Okay, I hope you can see that. So, get region R. Region R is here. So, R1 is here. R2 is going to be equal to A. And what is angle alpha? Angle alpha is basically zero because we've, seek, uh, we've sweeped out a line segment from alpha zero counterclockwise going away from the x-axis all the way around and end up at beta equals to 2 pi. And basically, that is what we have. So, we're going to move from the double integral polar coordinates to the iterative integral and that is going to give me... Okay, 
Leave the two for now, all right? Just leave, just, just imagine that the two is there. What is the integral on the outside? Remember, the integral on the outside is the integral we're gonna perform the last one, which is basically uh, with respect to angle theta. Okay, so um, with respect to angle theta, so basically the limits that I have is from zero, okay, because alpha is equal to zero to two pi. Right, so now we wanna handle the limits on the inside. The limits on the inside is with respect to R. Okay, so what is it? R1 is going to be equal to 0, and what is R2? R2 is none other than A. Okay, I hope you can see that. Let me just do a quick track. Correct. So what is the integrand? What is the integrand? The integrand is the function that gives us the surface. Okay, so Z is equal to this one. Okay, this is the function in terms of R and theta. Okay, so the function is square root A squared take away R squared. Now, the reason why theta is not there because really it's the value of z is independent of theta, um, it's sym symmetrical. But I need to multiply the function by r, okay, to give me the integrand, okay, and then I can integrate that with respect to r first and then with respect to theta. Alright, and um, yeah, okay, the, the 2 is here, right, so multiply by 2. Now, can I evaluate this? Well, it's not a problem. Now, I'm going to bring the 2 inside, so integrate from 0 to 2 pi and 0 to a. And I would somehow bring the 2 and multiply by inside here. So what I have is a 2R, and then I will have A squared multiplied by R, sorry, subtract R squared, and um, this is basically to the power of half. Just rewriting it in another way. Okay, this is exactly the same as this, rewriting it in another way. And I want to partial integrate the integrand which is given by here with respect to R. The reason why I wrote it this way is because the derivative of this with respect to R gives me this, with the exception of the minus sign. So what I essentially get is integrate 0 to pi, evaluating the integral on the inside, I would have minus 2 divided by 3, a squared subtract r squared, raised to the power of 3 divided by 2, uh, d theta. Okay, and uh, sorry, I need to put the limits of 0 and a. And that is all that is to it. Um, just check by differentiating. Yeah, this brings us out, this becomes 1. Then subtract by 1 gives us halves, but we need to differentiate the inside minus 2r, which is what we have, and then minus that we get positive. Okay, so um, yeah, just, just carry on with the usual calculations. Okay, but remember, as when dealing with double integrals in the rectangular coordinates, make sure you know how you substitute the limits. Very, be very careful because there's an a here, no doubt that a is given as a constant and there's an r here. Sometimes there'll be a theta. In this case, we are fortunately enough, the surface is not defined in terms of theta. But when I'm substituting the limits, I'm substituting the limits inside the places where there is r, which is basically over here. So my 3 over 2 is going to go inside r and the 0 is going to go inside r. And essentially, what do I have? Oh, sorry, my a, my a is going to go inside r and 0 is going to go inside r. So essentially what I have is integrate 0 to 2 pi from 2 divided by 3 a cubed d theta. And as you can see, theta is not inside there. So this is a simple integration as 4 divided by 3 pi a to the power of 3. And this is, as we expected it, the volume of the sphere, the whole sphere. And that is why it is to it is correct. Um, tallies with the geometrical arguments, but this time we have used a heck of a complicated method, double integral in polar coordinates to find a value with a volume of the sphere. But nonetheless, an elementary problem for those who are introduced to polar coordinates, uh, double integrals in polar coordinates, and there's all there is to it. Find region R, find the surface, make sure that the surface is given as a function in terms of R and theta. What do I mean by that? A certain unique value that you have, okay, in this case it's square root. But we recognize that we are missing the area at the bottom. So what we do is multiply by 2, find the region R, let z equals to 0, find the region R, and then find R1, theta, R2, theta, alpha, alpha, and beta, put inside the limits, put in an R term inside here, integrate accordingly, and the answer should be falling right in front of you. Hey, thanks. Next lesson, let's go to more complicated examples.